I live in a secluded little town. It's almost as if we were disconnected from the rest of the world. Like all disconnected towns, everyone knows everyone, we're all friends, and we have our own ghost stories and legends. What our little town is known for is the legend of Blood Moon Lake. Long ago, there was an atomic bomb that leveled the land back in World War II, causing radiation to spread like wildfire. A little while later, once the radiation was believed to be gone, people started building homes. During the first years of this little town, there was no water source, so construction workers started creating a lake for the town. There was a little girl who was practically the life of the village. She would go down to the currently constructing lake to see if the workers needed anything. She, of all the people in the town, was the most excited about the lake. Every day, the lake became more perfect, becoming deeper as construction went on. Eventually, the little girl needed help getting in and out of the empty lake. Soon, the lake was finished, the water was low, but it was expected to rain that night. The next day, the court of the town named the lake Eclipse Lake, because the day it was completed was the day of the lunar eclipse. That night, everyone in town surrounded the lake, hoping to watch the eclipse. Everyone, except for the little girl, stood there in shock and sadness. For in the center of the lake was the little girl. Dead. The men jumped into the lake, swimming as fast as they could, just for the slightest chance that she may still be alive. As they took the girl out of the water, they lay her small, limp body on the ground. What was unusual was that there was this thick moss attached to her leg, which acted like a rope going into the lake. The mother pushed past the townspeople, going to her daughter's side. At this point in the legend, the moon is now red, a darker red than usual, dimming the light that was given to the townspeople. To the girl. The crying mother was going to give her daughter one last hug, when suddenly, the girl's corpse was pulled into the lake by the moss. Afterwards, the lake was renamed Blood Moon Lake, all because of a legend, a ghost story. I'll tell you now, this is not just a story. I have experienced it firsthand. On the night the Blood Moon comes, the little girl returns. She comes out of the lake, distorted. She doesn't look at all human. She comes out of the lake and towers above you. At the very least, she's ten feet tall. Her skin is a gray color with a green tint, and her long hair is the same but darker. Her hands are webbed like a frog's, and her body is skinny and long. She wears something around her waist, something that looks like kind of a long fishtail, and acts as a skirt. On her shoulders are slits that look like gills. Her face, halfway covered by her hair, shows an eye that resembles a snake's. I was frozen in fear as this girl approached me. She swayed slightly as she walked on land. Once she got to me, she gave me an offer I'll never forget. Her voice sounded like a whisper shout, but it wasn't as quiet. Would you like to see the blood moon? She asked. Underwater? As she spoke, her large, sharp teeth were exposed. Without thinking, I responded, What do you mean? Her smile only seemed to grow. The blood moon looks beautiful, she responded, especially from underwater. Don't worry, I will let you drown. I promise. She then held out her hand. I felt as though I was hypnotized when I took her slippery hand. It allowed her to lead me to the edge of the lake. My mind raced. Why am I not running? I wondered. Left foot now in the water. Right foot now in the water. I continued to walk, going deeper and deeper into the lake. As the water got above my knee, I started coming out of my trance. I soon gripped onto reality and regained control of my body. As soon as I was able to, I pulled my hand from her grip and ran. I heard her hiss along with the sounds of water splashing and moving behind me. Moving as fast as I could, I got away. I didn't dare look back. I ran out of the lake, into town, and into my home. After my parents calmed me down, they sent me to bed. I think they thought I scared myself, 
or some friends decide to prank me. I am much older now, and I devote my free time to learning about this legend, considering I never went back to the lake. I am now an intelligence manager for the mayor, and with that job, I am allowed to go through historic documents. I have discovered that after the incident of the little girl, many construction workers died. Mostly, the ones that worked on the lake. The older documents claim that the cause of death was unknown, while recent documents conclude it was radiation poisoning. That's understandable, considering the radiation may not have been completely gone and have been under the topsoil. Plus, this could have caused contamination to the water of the lake. The lake and water were fixed before new generations of people came. The documents didn't claim that there was something in the lake while it was being fixed. Nobody believed me, so I just stopped trying to prove it. It made me question myself. I needed to prove it to myself. That's when I started my research. I understand that she's real. I forgot to mention the last thing I remember of that night. It was the moon. My bed was next to a window, and I couldn't help but look up at it. The blood moon. Even now, I try to imagine what it would look like underwater. <laughs>